Previously now, I've experimented with trying to turn corn into candy corn and sugar cane into candy canes. But with Easter coming up, I want to try my hand at making jelly beans out of beans. Normal jelly beans actually contain 0% beans. But from applying some knowledge I've gained from previously making candies, beer, and bioplastic, it should, in theory, be possible to derive 100% of the ingredients from beans. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then likely learn why this method is never used. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. But first, what do a bunch of bean-shaped candies have to do with Easter? Despite its name, the jelly bean doesn't even use jelly or beans in the candy making process. The inside of the jelly bean is made mostly with sugar and corn syrup and thickened with corn starch. The outside of the candy uses a shell coated by shaking them in a container of syrup. So why are they called jelly beans? Basically, just because of their shape. Candy makers have always made candy into novelty shapes like candy hearts, candy bunnies, ropes, and etc. Shaping candies into things people knew was and is still common. At the time, the diet of Americans was dominated by beans and vegetables, so the shape is recognizable and distinctive. As for the origin of the jelly bean, its history is still a bit unknown, but likely shares roots with the Middle Eastern candy known as Turkish Delight. A jelly candy covered in powdered sugar that has been around since biblical times. Jelly beans are a popular and widespread treat most notably consumed on Easter. But why Easter? It began in the 1930s, as jelly beans were realized to have an oval shape that resembled eggs. Eggs have had a major association with Easter due to eggs being a symbol of new life and the resurrection of Jesus. So while jelly beans aren't normally made from actual beans, how could you make it from them? If you're someone like me who likes to sometimes take things a bit too literally. First up, while there exist a few forms of sweet bean dishes, they are often made with regular sugar mixed in to sweeten it. That's because almost every bean contains very little sugar. They do, however, contain a fair amount of carbohydrates in the form of starch. In fact, starch is often extracted from beans, such as mung beans, for use in making items like cellophane noodles. I've previously learned how to extract starch from a different plant, the potato, and use the starch polymer chains to make a basic bioplastic. But I've also previously taken similar starches from corn and depolymerized the starch chains, forming corn syrup, a form of sugar. So in theory, I can produce all the ingredients in a jelly bean, sugar, corn syrup, and cornstarch, all from just beans. So let's grow some beans. But with Easter being an early spring holiday, I need to start growing my beans over the winter inside. So I expanded on my ongoing closet garden project with a new form of hydroponics, aeroponics. Aeroponics is a method of growing a plant where the roots grow down into a container, which then has a sprayer, which intermittently sprays the roots directly with water and nutrients. With that set, I planted a range of beans, mung beans, azuki beans, and peas, and left them to grow. Previously, I also more traditionally grew my own soybeans for making tofu from scratch. So I also have a supply of these beans left over as well. All right, so I have my big old bowl of a bunch of beans that I'm gonna bake. And this is a assortment of all the different ones I've grown. I got soybeans, I got azuki, I got mung beans, and I've been soaking them overnight. And next I'm going to roast them and then turn them into a flour. From that flour, then I'm gonna extract the starch. From that starch, I'm going to depolymerize it into sugar. That'll be the base for making my jelly beans. Tasty. Roasted. All right, I grind it up. Milkshake. Yeah, blender sponsor. Almost fine enough to add to the water glass. Wait, which project is this? I think it's close enough. <laughs> Bean flour. All right, let's taste it. 
like beanie flower, I guess. Kind of the blandness of flour, but a hint of bean. Now that I've taken dry beans, soaked them, and then re-dried them, and now ground them, I'm gonna soak them again. And uh, this should cause most of the proteins and other things to dissolve into the water while the starch settles to the bottom. And I'll just keep rinsing it several times until just the starch forms at the bottom. This is similar to what I did to extract potato starch when I was making bioplastic. All right, so I've rinsed my flour a few times now and should hopefully just be the starch left over but settled at the bottom. And just gonna rinse it once more and I'm gonna add the enzyme to turn the starch into a sugar. That's kind of good. Just a little. Close enough. All right, so we want this guy at 140 degrees. So that's the max temp of the catalyst that it'll work at. Hotter it is, the faster the reaction will go. All right, 140. In theory, this should be an oobleck, which is usually made with cornstarch. We just have bean starch instead. Let's give it a taste. Mmm, gooey. Tastes like beans. Like completely flavorless beans. Tastes like emptiness. Emptiness. Definitely not sweet. So, should be very noticeable if this works at all. All right, so we just dropped below 140, and now we can add in the enzyme and turn it into sugar. Go, baby, go. Get ready for bean vision. Beano vision. Sanitized first. Bean vision. Let's take a closer look at the reaction that's occurring. Starch is composed of a chain of glucose units. With the addition of the enzyme, these chains are broken up, releasing the individual glucose molecules, which is a simple sugar. So after letting the enzymes react for a few hours, you now have some sweet syrup from beans. Hmm. Well, it's definitely sweeter. It has much stronger flavor than before, where it's just nothing. It still has the bean taste, which is gonna be interesting, but that means it worked. So next we're gonna add some bentonite clay. I'm gonna mix it in there and use it as a clarifying agent to take out any floating particulates, any leftover starch or other impurities, get them to settle out, and then just pour out the dissolved sugar into this pan and use some silica gel, dry that guy out. We can get some more concentrated sweetness. Circulate that air. All right. While the sugar dries, I prepared some extra flavoring for the jelly beans of a variety of different beans I've grown, including a few more exotic beans I've gathered in the past in Mexico, coffee, and chocolate. Now I should have everything to make my jelly beans. I have the starch that I first made and extracted from the beans, and then I turn that into a sugar, and then some of it I tried to boil down a little bit and got a little too hot and caramelized. It's gonna add a little bit extra flavor, but I think it'll work. Then for actual flavoring, I have seven different beans that I ground up, can add to it. Mung bean, soybean, azuki bean, yellow peas, peanuts, coffee, and chocolate. I'm gonna cook it down to the right temperature, put them in the mold, cool, and sit for a couple hours. Let's make some beans. taste this. Pretty sweet. It's like not as sweet as sugar, but definitely sweet. Yeah, that's all I got of the good stuff. And I got the caramel. Just enough. Then I'm just gonna heat this guy up to 245 degrees, which will require some of the water to evaporate out of it to get to the right thickness. Then I'll add it to the molds. Let's sit for a couple hours. Seems to have thickened up quite a bit, and I think just because a lot of impurities and different ingredients than a normal one, it's not behaving the same. Kind of go with this and see how it turns out. Just kind of mix it bean by bean with each ingredient and see how well it hardens. Already it's pretty thick, so I uh, also don't have quite as much now. A lot of water is boiled off. So we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. Is that the dairy I call some? Something like this. Except it's like bean bean mat. <laughs> <laughs> Come to bean mat. Throw in the fridge and check on them in the morning. Hopefully they'll harden up into actual jelly beans. Got these guys chilled overnight in the fridge and hardened up a bit. Next, I'm gonna put a little outer coat on it. 
using some of the leftover syrup and some of the leftover sugar and to coat it in the syrup, and then tumble it in the sugar, hopefully give it a nice coat on the outside of it. Or just turn it into one big glob, we'll see. Do you know which one's which? Not anymore. I'll just put it in the proper canister. A little better. All right, let this guy roll for a few minutes. Let's see. <laughs> Got a couple that kind of worked for. The rest of them, as I feared, turned into giant blobs. But <laughs> separate them again. Oh, sorry, Andy. That's super funny. I think there's a little too much moisture in all of it. After separating and cleaning them up, finally ready to reveal my completed jelly beans. 100% bean jelly beans. Let's try a couple of these and see how they turned out. I uh, lost track of which flavors are which, so it'll be a surprise. Let's see what we got. That is definitely interesting. It like has the right consistency of a jelly bean. And it's a little sweet, but it's also bean flavored. <laughs> That must have been one of the mung beans or soybeans or one of those. Very different, <laughs> but I think I like it. Let's try one that's either coffee or chocolate. It's coffee. No, no, it's just dark chocolate. Hmm, that's good. <laughs> that's very strong chocolate flavor. There's a the coffee. That's also pretty good. I think that's mung bean. Interesting flavor to combine with sweetness. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's not horrible. All right, so overall, not too bad. I'd say it's actually a pretty good success. They're not like your normal jelly beans, but they're they're special in their own way. They're 100% bean. But I'm gonna put it to the real test this weekend. Got Easter with my family, I'm gonna see my niece and nephews, and I've had them try a variety of other things I made in the past. So this will be the real test, is what they think of my jelly beans. So the process of extracting the sugars from these beans was very similar to the process of making a lot of beers, which you do with grains like barley and wheat. And I previously did this with wheat. I'm currently growing some barley, but it's a ways from being ready to harvest, but I have a bunch of beans still. So I wanna try, bring back our How to Brew Everything series and try and brew a beer from beans. And see how that turns out. See how bean beer tastes. It might be weird. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.